I see you. Your eyes. Your hands. Your chips. Everything. So I don't need to see your cards. We play at FullTailPoker.com. This is Diego Cortez. Adam Schoenfeld. Welcome to The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tilt Poker. And we have a very nice gentleman named Eric Baldwin, who people know online as Baseball D. Ironically, he is not bald, although he did play baseball. <laughs> yes, but he, uh, more importantly, he, as we shoot this, and there will be maybe a delay before it's aired, but he's leading in the Card Player Player of the Year standings. And he won a bracelet at the World Series, he almost won a second one, and, um, you know, he's up among the leaders, anyone can win, but this could be uh, our next card player, player of the year. I like his chances. So you've been trailing Vitaly Lunkin, the very prestigious card player, player of the year. P-O-Y. For almost the entire year, like, really behind. And now, as we shoot this, you've just surged ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And it really is a pretty cool deal, this player of the year. Um, is it a big deal for you, or, or is it in your thought process at all, or just a sideline? Uh, yeah, I've always, I've always told my friends if I ever had a good start to the year and was in the hunt for that, it was something that I'd want to pursue. More uh, just because it's fun, you know, it's a contest. Um, I think it's fun for the same reasons I play multi-table tournaments versus cash games. You know, mm -hmm. there's like a... It's a contest and there's a set winner, you know? Right. That's why I like multi-table tournaments better than cash games. It's like, a finish line. There's a winner, a second. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the glory lasts forever. I mean, this is something that you can point to and remember. And Yeah, I mean, it, it would be amazing. I don't want to think about any of that. I just want to stay focused on the... But on what I on what I'm doing day to day, and if it ends up happening, that'd be great. It's changed your schedule as far as the fact that you're going to play more tournaments and really try to to do it. Yeah, I've found myself playing a lot less online, making some trips that that I normally wouldn't. And uh, <laughs> so, if December rolls around, let's say theoretically, and mm -hmm. you're neck and neck, or maybe Vitaly, I don't know if you're playing else. a whole lot, yeah. but or someone else starts ahead, you might be playing like the fifty dollar with rebuys at the at the Crystal yeah, Palace or something like anything that. Anything that would qualify, yeah. I mean, it would be fun down the stretch. And, I mean, I'm obviously still a, a pretty big underdog to win it because, like, really? these WPT mains, if whoever wins those is going to get a significant number of points and any number of 20-some people would pass me whoever wins the bike. You know, if it's one of those 20-some people, mm -hmm. they're going to pass me. So I can't really worry too much about who's in what place right now. I just need to stay focused on accumulating points myself. And, you know, because I can't really control what anyone else is doing. Yeah. So all I can do is... You could kill them. <laughs> Let's not, you know, We're going to wait until December to start thinking about that. Mathematically, that's not true. They're at another table, and you're like, string bet? Yeah, string yeah right. Bet, start putting 22. bodies out. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've always thought of you as an online player, because you've had tons of success online under mm -hmm. your world-famous screen name, Baseball D. But this year, you've really jumped to prominence in the live tournaments. Did, have you changed anything? or? Um... I started off playing online. I just moved out here about a year ago from Wisconsin. So I was, when I was in Wisconsin, there's not as many good live tournaments in the area, and the winters are long. So I'd be playing, you know, 50 to 70 hours online during right. the winter. Right. So I just kind of used that to build my bankroll, and then I started dabbling in some live tournaments. Realized that I enjoyed them. Sometimes I enjoy online more, but as a whole, I enjoy playing live more, just because you can interact with people and whatnot. And you began to have success right away, or in the live tournaments? Yeah, actually, I was fortunate enough to have some success right away. So, I, I just realized that I liked live tournaments more, so I just used online to build my bankroll, and then started transitioning into live, and it just kind of came together this year. Right. Well, and it was a bit of a disappointment, because 
in the World Series, you won an event, and then mm -hmm. unlike these four other guys who won two events, <laughs> you only finished third. Right, a very disappointing <laughs> third a week later. <laughs> right, in, in, a ten, in a 10K. You have to be very disappointed. That's all right. I don't mind flying under the radar a little bit. No, that's, that's tremendous. I mean, especially, this is like right away, right? You you won an, an event, $1,500 no-limit event, mm -hmm. which is a big field event, tough mm -hmm. to win, and then right away you come back in a 10K, and you almost win it. And I think after winning one, just to get your mind focused on, especially in, in the no limit or pot limit event where there's a lot of decisions to be made, to keep your concentration, your focus, and have another big finish is, is yeah. a challenge. Yeah, that's true. Uh, in the interviews after the bracelet I won, they asked me, you know, are you going to be confident? Is this going to be a great <laughs> boost? I said, actually, it's going to be tough to stay focused. You know, right. it'd be real easy to just coast the rest of the way. Right. So I was, I was real focused on staying focused <laughs> right. and uh, it ended up working out. I thought I was going to win the second one too. So yeah. the first one was 1500 no limit. Now mm -hmm. that's, as Diego said, this is one of the big field events. The 1500s were super popular this year mm -hmm. and then that's a certain mindset and then the next week you're in the 10k you know, world championship pot limit event. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself making a lot of adjustments or do you still play the same game? Absolutely. I mean there was <laughs> Almost 2,100 players in the 1,500, and is no limit and in the low buy-in. Right. Yeah, so the the range of players is from world class to not so skilled, <laughs> and so it's interesting because you have to have a such a vastly different game plan against each different player at your table. The uh, 10K pot limit final table, everyone was pretty good player, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so that final table was actually pretty boring because the stack sizes were such that nobody should be messing around too much. So there was like very few flops and just a lot of raising and folding. And so it was, it was a lot different. It was an interesting contrast. In the 1500, you might go the entire tournament, including the final, without knowing anyone. But that's <laughs> not going to happen in the 10K. Right. Yeah, that was a lot tougher feel. The 1500 events are tough in the sense that on the one hand, you've got pretty weak players, but you don't get a lot of chips to maneuver with. Mm -hmm. So it would be great if you had, like the main event, a big stack and these players were just going to give their chips away, but you don't have enough time or enough, yeah. even enough depth in a hand necessarily to really do anything too advanced. That's to definitely true. It was better this year than previous years. Right. They tripled the stacks and yeah. the structures were great this year. I think it really showed the number of people that won multiple bracelets mm -hmm. and, and had multiple final tables. And pros who, who did well. I don't uh, know the final mm -hmm. number, but see, all, all but 10 events were won by pros or something. I thought this the year. structures were really good this yeah, year. It was, yeah, it was great. And uh, so now, are, do, do you, are, is your online game slipping at all because you're going after the player of the year? Tell you the truth, I haven't played online enough to know. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, how much um, are you playing there? Like I used to almost never miss a Sunday, right, uh, right. and then and then a couple of the big weekdays during the week, and lately I've just been playing whenever there's nothing live going on, and that hasn't been very often. And now if I'm going to be playing pretty much everything live, I'll use maybe a Sunday as a day off, whereas normally I'd be grinding online. Right. No, you know? it's the other way around. Exactly. Now, more importantly, I think you're the first guest that we've had with a mustache. <laughs> and and yeah. is that, that's a live tournament thing. To get. <laughs> it's a live tournament thing to really affect other people's focus where they're wondering if you're in law enforcement <laughs> or in the porn adult video <laughs> right. field. I'm trying common. to look a little older so my bluffs work more I was going to say you're a young guy, but like now you look older than I am. <laughs> no, no, we joke with you because we were joking about it before, but this is a... Uh, what's the story? It's a that? different look. What's, what's the background? People are, are going to wonder if they see you at the table, so we're yeah. giving you a chance to... It's, it's kind of a tradition. My uh, college friends and I go on a fishing trip in Canada every summer and just got back from that. And we don't shave for the whole trip. And then at the end, we carve something goofy out like a mustache. And then when we get home to our college town, we go out to the bars and have some fun with that, scare the women, make people laugh. Uh, this year, my flight was the, the day after we got back, so I wasn't able to go out to the bars with them. So I decided to bring it back for some, <laughs> some laughs with the people back here. It's, it's awesome. just keep it as you play these events. Right? <laughs> I'd like to, but my girlfriend's about to kill me and uh, either kill me or shave it in my sleep. So I agreed with her to shave it after the, the bike main event unless I win it. So. And if you win that, but even if you're just still in the player of the year contention, yes, I don't yeah. know if you can do that. <laughs> I'll say one thing, it. and I'd ask you to promise <laughs> us that if you win... <laughs> For your official portrait on the cover of Card Player, <laughs> you oh yeah, mustache—that'd oh, be a wow. requirement. 
I can't make any promises. <laughs> I already made a promise the other way. You guys right. might get me in trouble. Thanks for joining us on The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tilt Poker. And uh, it's very soon to talk to Eric Baldwin. And uh, he's already a star, but he may be a future superstar. As the first mustachioed Scoop guest, we have to bring him back. <laughs> so um, join us next week for part two. And look for us on Card Player TV. I've seen just about everything. Seen queens overthrow kings and straights flushed away. I felt the sweat after every re-raise and nearly buckled after bad beats. Seen rags lead to riches and witnessed countless miracles on the river. So if you want to play, take a seat and show me something I haven't seen. We play at FullTiltPoker.com.